May the gods direct you to the best. Amen. I thank thee. Um, See you good night. I cue my understudy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, understudy. Call in the understudy. Understudy to the stage. We ran out of O's. <laughs> Aloha. Can I, can I, Richard? So nice to see all of you. No, Thanks for joining us. No yes. Thank you. You cannot so be long. replaced. Farewell. I tell you, Farewell. <laughs> not be replaced. Do, 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 do. Bye, Richard. Bye, Thank bye. You. See you. Thank yes. you for coming. Read the rest of the script. Ha! You didn't catch that one. Okay. Shall we take a break or shall we? Um, move uh, might as well take a. We're only in Hawaii, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, take right. a little break. I think we'll be okay. nice. Okay. Okay. See you in five or ten minutes. They love this plant. They love this plant. I'll bring you some seeds. I'll give it to my landlady to put in her new garden. Oh my gosh, yeah, and you can put it right in front of your of your door, and then when you open the door, it's going to be butterflies flying all over the place. It's really oh, cool. Oh, 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 oh. I'll send you a video. All right. That's what we like to hear. Now, we're not looking for Richard, but we are looking for... Una. Oh, is, that, okay. is that milkweed you're talking about, Linda? No, it's this other plant that is called Mexican bush or something that the monarch butterfly love like they love more than the milkweed oh wow i have uh, milkweed and the the mexican plant and the butterfly just thrive on it they're like just crazy about it wow more of the mexican one than the milkweed huh? yep yep I had, they, I had milkweed growing inside my house but of course the butterflies can't get to it they oh okay the the caterpillars will eat the plant but then they 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 don't feed on the flower but this this bush will feed the the butterflies and the caterpillar so feed the whole thing oh and then you have the butterflies coming back to to drink the nectar yeah. oh. we've got a long way to go folks We're yeah i'll get you guys some seeds yeah well, I give me some, some seeds. i'll get you some too i want some so seeds for that mexican weed too <laughs> okay i'll bring you some for sure bye and All then right. we'll see the butterflies <laughs> now these, these okay. come around a lot scene five simply speaking <clears throat> thus far and so farewell lucius gaius lewis Stop. Thanks, royal sir. My emperor hath wrote, I must from hence. And I am right sorry that I must report ye, my master's enemy. Our subjects, sir, will not endure his joke, and for ourselves to show less sovereignty than they must needs appear unkingly like. So, sir, I desire of you a conduct over land to Milford Haven. Madam, all joy befall your grace. And you, my lords, you are appointed for that office, the due of honor to no point omit. So farewell, noble Lucius. Your hand, my lord. Well, uh, receive it friendly, but from this time forth I wear it as your enemy. Sir, the event is yet to name the winner. Fare I, you well. Fare you well. <laughs> leave not the worthy Lucius, my good lords, till he have crossed the Severn. Happiness. He goes hence frowning. But it honors us that we have given him cause. Tis all the better. Your valiant Britons have their wishes in it. Lucius hath wrote already to the Emperor how it goes here. It fits not, therefore, ripely our chariots and our horsemen be in readiness. The powers that he already hath in Gallia will soon be drawn to head and from whence he more 
his war for Britain. Tis not sleepy business, but must be looked to speedily and strongly. Our expectations are that it should, it would be thus, hath made us forward. Uh, but my gentle queen, this, where is our daughter? She hath not appeared before the Roman, and to us uh, hath uh, tendered the duty of the day. She looks, uh, she looks us like a thing more made of malice than of duty. We had noted it, and uh, call her before us, for we have been too slight in suffering. Royal sir, since the exile of Posthumus, most retired hath her life been. The cure were off, my lord, tis time must do. Beseech your majesty, forbear sharp speeches to her. She's a lady so tender of rebukes, that words are strokes and strokes death to her. Where is she, sir? How can her contempt be answered? Please you, sir, her chambers are all locked and there's no answer that will be given to the loud of noise we make. My lord, when last I went to visit her, she prayed me to excuse her keeping close. Were too constrained by her infirmity, she should that day leave unpaid to you, which daily she was bound to proffer. This she wished me to make known, but our great court made me to blame in memory. Her door's locked, not seen of late. Oh, great heavens, that which I fear prove false. Ah. Son, I say follow the king. That man of hers, Pisanio, road servant, have not seen these two days. Go look after. Pisanio, thou stand so for posthumous. He hath a drug of mine. I pray his absence proceed by swallowing that, for he believes it is a thing most precious. But for her, where is she gone? Happily despite has seized her, or winged with fever of her love, she's flown to her desired posthumous. Gone she is to death or to dishonor, and to my end can make good use of neither. She being down, I have the placing of the British crown. How now, my son? Tis certain she's fled. Go in and cheer the king. He rages. None dare come about him. All the better. May this night forestall him of the coming day. I love and I hate her, for she's fair and royal, and that she hath all courtly part, more exquisite than lady, ladies, women, from every one the best she hath. And she, of all compounded, outsells them all. I love her, therefore, but disdaining me, and throwing her favours on the low posthumous, Slander so her judgment that what's else rare is choked, and in that point I will conclude to hate her, nay, indeed, to be revenged upon her. For when fools shall, oh, <clears throat> who's here? What, what are you packing, sirrah? Come hither, oh, you precious pander, villain, where is thy lady? In a word, or else thou art straight away with the fiends. Oh, good, my lord. Where is thy lady? Or oh, by Jupiter, I will not ask again. Close, villain. I'll have this secret from thy heart, or rip thy heart to find it. Is she with posthumous? From whose so many weights of baseness cannot a dram worth be drawn? Alas, my lord, how can she be with him when she when, when she was missed? He is in Rome. Where is she, sir? Come nearer. 
no further haunting. Satisfy me, home. What is become of her? Oh, my all-worthy lord. Oh, worthy villain. Discover where thy mistress is at once. At the next word, no more worthy lord. Speak, or thy silence on the instant is thy condemnation and thy death. Then, sir, this paper is the history of my knowledge touching her flight. Let's say it. I'll pursue her even to Augustus' throne. Or this, or perish. She's far enough, and what he learns by this may prove his travel, not her danger. Uh. All right, to my lord, she's dead. Oh, Imogen, safe mayest thou wander, safe return again. Dura, is this letter true? Sir, as I think. His posthumous hand, I know it. Dura, if thou wouldst not be a villain, but do me true service, undergo those employments wherein I should have caused to use thee with a serious industry. That is, what villainy soe'er I bid thee do to perform it directly and truly. I would think thee an honest man. Thou shouldst neither want my means for thy relief, nor my voice for thy preferment. Well, my good lord. Wilt thou serve me? For since patiently and constantly thou hast stuck to the bare fortune of that beggar posthumous, thou canst not, in the course of gratitude, but be a diligent follower of mine. Wilt thou serve me? Sir, I will. Give me thy hand. It is my purse. Is any of thy late master's garments in thy possession? I have, my lord, at my lodging. The same suit he wore when he took leave of my lady and mistress. The first service thou dost me, fetch that suit hither. Let it be thy lint servant. Go! I shall, my lord. Meet thee at Milford Haven. I forgot to ask him one thing. I'll remember it anon. Even there, thou villain posthumous, will I kill thee. I would these garments would come. She said upon a time, the bitterness of it I now belch from my heart, that she held the very garment of posthumous in more respect than my noble a natural person together with the adornment of my quality. With that suit upon my back, will I ravish her. First kill him, and in her eyes, there shall she see my valor, which will then be a torment to her contempt. He on the ground, my speech of insultment ended on his dead body, and when my lust hath dined, which, as I say, to vex her, I will execute in the clothes that she so praised. To the court I'll knock her back, put her home again. She hath despised me rejoicingly, and I'll be merry in my revenge. Be those the garments? Aye, my noble lord. How long is it since she went to Milford Haven? Uh, she can scarce be there yet. Bring this apparel to my chamber. That is the second thing that I have commanded thee. The third is that thou wilt be a voluntary mute to my design. Be but duteous, and true preferment shall tender itself to thee. My revenge is now at Milford. Would I had wings to follow it. Come and be true. Thou biddest me to my loss, for true to thee, were to prove false, which I will never be, to him that is most true. Till no third go, and find not her whom thou pur pursuest, flow, flow, you heavenly blessings on her. This fool's speed be crossed with slowness, labor be his mead. Scene six, whale, before the cave of Valerius. 
Enter Imogen in boy's clothes. I see a man's life is a tedious one. I have tired myself, and for two nights together I have made the ground my bed. I should be sick, but my resolution helps me. Milford, when from the mountain top Pisanio showed thee, showed thee, thou wast within a ken. Oh, Joe, I think foundations fly by the wretched. Such, I mean, where there should be relief. Two beggars told me I could not miss my way. Will poor folks lie that have afflictions on them, knowing this a punishment or trial? Yes, no wonder. When rich one scarce tell true, to lapse in fullness is sorer than to lie for need and falsehood. Is worse in kings than beggars. My dear Lord, thou art one of the false ones. Now I think of thee, my hunger's gone. But even before, I was a point to sink for food. But what is this? Here is a path to it. This some savage hold. I were best not to call. I dare not call, yet famine. Air clean in overthrow nature makes it valiant. Plenty and peace breeds cowards. Hardness, even of hardiness, is mother. Ho, oh, who is here? If anything that is civil, speak. Is savage, take or land. Ho, oh, no answer? Then I will enter. Best draw my sword, and if mine enemy but fear the sword like me, he will scarcely look on it. Such a fool, good heavens! You, Polydote, have proved best woodsman and our master of the feast. Godwell and I will play the cook and servant, tis our match. The sweat of industry would dry and die, but for the end of it works too. Come, our stomachs will make what's homely savory. Weariness can snore upon the flint. When resty sloth finds the down pillow hard. Now peace be here, poor house that keepest thyself. I'm thoroughly weary. I'm weak with toil, yet strong in appetite. There's cold meat in the cave, we'll browse on that, whilst we have what we've killed be cooked. Stay. Come not in but that it eats our victuals. I should think here, we're a fairy. What's the matter, sir? By Jupiter, an angel, or if not, an earthly paragon. Behold, divineness, no elder than a boy. Good masters, harm me not. Before I enter here, I call and thought, to have begged or bought what I have took. Good throat, I have stolen not, nor will not, though I have found good strip strewed in the floor. Here's money for my meat. I will have left it on the board so soon as I have made my meal and parted with prayers for the provider. Money, youth? All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Well, as tis no better reckoned but of those who worship dirty gods. I see you're angry. No, if you kill me for my fault, I should have died had I not made it. Whither bound? To meal for heaven. What's it your name? Fidel, sir. I have a kins I have a kinsman who is bound for Italy. He embarked at Milford, to whom being going almost spent with hunger, I am fall in his offense. Pretty fair youth, think us no churls, nor measure our good minds by this rude place we live in. Well, well encountered, tis most night. You shall have better cheer ere you depart, and thanks to stay and eat. Boys, Bid him welcome. Were you a woman, youth, I should woo hard, but be your groom. 
in honesty, I bid for you as I buy. I'll make it my comfort. He is a man. I will love him as my brother. And such a welcome as I give, in to, give to him. After long absence, such is yours most welcome. Be spring, springly, for you fall amongst friends. Amongst friends, if brothers. Will it have been so that they had been my father's sons? They had my price being less, and so more equal ballast, ballast, ballasting to thee, Postumus. He rings at some distress. Would I could free it. Or I, whate'er it be, the pain it costs, what danger, gods. Ark, boys. Great men. That had a court no bigger than this cave, that did attend themselves and have the virtue which their own conscience sealed them, laying by nothing gave of differing multitudes, could not outpeer this twain. Pardon me, gods, I changed my sex to be companion with them since Leonatus falls. It shall be so. Boys, we'll go dress our hunt. Fair youth. Come in. Discourse is heavy. Fasting. When we have supped, we'll mannerly demand thee of thy story, so far as thou wilt speak it. Pray, draw near. The night to the owl and morn to the lark, less welcome. Thanks, sir. I pray, draw near. Scene seven. Rome, a public place. Enter two senators and tribunes. This is the tenor of the emperor's wit, that since the common men are now in action against the Pannonians and Dalmatians, and that the legion now in Galilee Gallia are full weak to undertake our wars against the fallen of Britons. What we do incite the gentry to this business, he creates Lucius proconsul and to you the tribunes for this immediate levy. He commends his absolute commission Long live Caesar! Is Lucius general of the forces? Aye. Remaining now in Gallia? With those legions which I have spoke of, where unto your levy must be suppliant, suppliant the words of your commission will tie you to the numbers and the time of their dispatch. We will discharge our duty. Act four, theme one, wails near the cave of Valeria. I'm near to the place where they should meet, if Pisanio have mapped it truly. How fit his garments serve me. <laughs> Why should his mistress who is made by him that made the tailor be fit too. <laughs> the rather saving reverend for the word, but he said a woman's fitness comes by fits. <laughs> Therein I must play the workman. I dare speak it to myself, for it is not vain glory for a man in his glass to confer in his own chamber. I mean, the lines of my body are as well drawn as is, no less young or strong, not beneath him in fortune, beyond him in the vantage of the time, above him in birth, alike conversant in general services, and more remarkable in single opposition. Yet this imperceivant thing loves him in my despite what mortality is 
posthumous thy head which now is growing upon thy shoulders shall within this hour be off thy mistress enforced thy garments cut to pieces before thy fate and all this done spurn her home to her father who may haply be a little angry for my so rough usage but my mother having power of his testiness shall turn all into my commendations my horse is tied up safe out sword and to a sore purpose fortune put them into my hand this is the very description of their meeting place and the fellow dares not deceive me Scene two, before the cave of Valerius. Enter from the cave, Valerius, Guderius, Arvaragus, and Imogen. You are not well. Remain here in the cave. We'll come to you after hunting. Brothers, stay here. Are we not brothers? So man and man should be, but clay and clay differs in dignity whose dust is both alike. I am very sick. Go you to hunting, I'll abide with him. So sick I am not, yet I am not well, but not so citizen a wanton as to seem to die ere sick. So please you, leave me, stick to your journal course. The breach of custom is breach of all. I am, I am ill, but you being by me cannot amend me. Society is not comfort to one not sociable. I am not very sick, since I can reason of it. Pray you, trust me here. I will rob I will rob none but myself and let me die, stealing so poorly. I love thee, I have spoke it. How much the quality quantity, the weight as much as I do love my father. What? How? How? If it be sin to say so, sir, I yoke me. In my good brother's fault, I know not why I love this youth, and I have heard you say love's reasons without reason, the buyer, briar at door, and a demand who is, is shall die, I say, my father, not this youth. Oh, noble strain. A worthiness of nature. Breed of greatness. Cowards after cowards. Cowards, father, cowards and base things, sire, base. Nature hath meal and bran, contempt and grace. I am not their father, yet who is should be. Doth miracle itself Loved me before, tis the ninth hour of the morn. Brother, farewell. I wish your sport. <laughs> your health, so please you, sir. These are kind creatures. God, what lies I have heard. Our, cunt, our courtiers say all savage by the court. Experience, O oh, thou disprovest report. The imperious seeds breed monsters, for the dish poor tributary rivers as sweet fish. I am sick still, heart sick, Pisanio. I will now taste of thy hug, thy drug. I could not stir him. He said he was gentle but unfortunate, dishonestly afflicted, but yet honest. Thus did he answer me, yet said hereafter, I might no more. To the field, to the field. We'll leave you for this time. Go in and rest. We'll, we'll not, not be long away. away. Oh, yeah. Pray, be not sick, for you must be our housewife. Well or ill, I am bound to you. And shall be ever. This youth, however distressed, appears he hath good ancestors. How angel-like his sings. But his neat cookery 
he cut our roots and characters and sauced our broths as Juno had been sick and he her diet. Nobly he yokes us smiling with a sigh as if the sigh was that it was for not being such a smile, the smile mocking the sigh that it would fly from so divine a temple to commix with winds that sailors rail at. I do note that grief and patience rooted in him both, mingle their spurs together. Grow patience, and it let the stinking elder grief untwain his perishing root with the increasing vine. It is great morning. Come away. Who's there? I cannot find those renegades. That villain hath mocked me. I'm faint. Those renegades means he not us. I partly know him. Tis Cloten, the son of the queen. I fear some ambush. I saw him not these many years, and yet I know tis he. We are held as outlaws. Hence. He's but one. You and my brother search what companies are near. Pray you away. Let me alone with him. Soft, what are you that fly me thus? Some villain mountaineers? I have heard of such. What slave art thou? A thing more slavish did I ne'er than answering a slave without a knock. Thou art a robber, a lawbreaker, a villain. Yield thee, thief. To somebody, uh, uh, Leilani, you want to be Guderius in this? She's still here? I'm lost again. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I lost again. I looked at um, I looked to the end of the plane. I have no more lines, so I just got. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, I'll, where, I guess where I'm, are we? I'm I'm fighting against myself. That's why. It's kind of what, what, what's that? Act four, scene uh, one. Scene yeah. two. Okay. The beginning of the scene. Um, uh, no. Um, it's between um, Colton and Galerius, right? Guderius, yeah. Guderius. So Ixion, Galerius, and our... <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. Colton and, uh, and Galerius. <laughs> okay. um, uh, when Galerius comes in, um, actually, a couple lines down, uh, let's see. Floton says, Thou villain base knows me not by my clothes. Mm, I'm, I'll find it. Wait. I said he was gentle, but he was unfortunate. You got that part already? Imogene. Uh, it's the no, nor thy tailor rascal. I'm so sorry. Let me see. Thou art a robber, a lawbreaker, a villain. You already read that part. Um, okay, we can we can start there. Okay, okay. Um, so that that's my line. Then you, <laughs> I want to change my, my line. clothes. <laughs> there. Yeah, and that's uh, and then you do Guderius. Okay. All right. Okay. Thou art a robber, a lawbreaker, a villain. Yield thee, thief. To who? To thee? What art thou? Have not I an arm as big as thine? A heart as big, thy words I grant are bigger, for I wear not my dagger in my mouth. Say what thou art, why should I yield to thee? Thou villain base, knowest me not by my clothes? No, nor by thy tailor, rascal. Who is thy grandfather? He made those clothes, which as it seems, make thee. Thou precious varlet, my tailor made them not. Hence then, and thank the man that gave them thee. Thou art some fool. I am low to beat thee. Thou injurious thief, 
hear but my name and tremble. What's thy name? Cloten, thou villain. Cloten, thou devil villain, but be thy name. I cannot really tremble at it. Were it toad or adder, spider, twould move me sooner. To thy further fear, nay, to thy mere confusion, thou shalt know I am son to the queen. I am sorry for it, not seeming so worthy as thy birth. Art not afeard? Those that I reverence, those I fear. The wise, at fools I laugh, not fear them. Die the death, when I have slain thee with my proper hand, I'll follow those that even now had fled hence, and on the gates of Ludstown set your heads. Yield, rustic mountaineer! There's <laughs> thou, Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> No companies abroad? None in the world. And, I mean, you did mistake him, sure. I cannot tell. Long is it since I saw him. But time hath nothing blurred those lines of favor, which then he wore. The snatches of his voice and burst of speaking were as his. I am absolute. T'was very cloten. In this place we left them. I wish my brother make good time with him. You say he is so fell. Being scarce made up. I mean, to man, he has not apprehension of roaring terrors. The effect of judgment is oft the cause of fear. But see thy brother? This Cloten was a fool, an empty prune. There was no money in it. Not Hercules could have knocked out his brains, for he had some, yet I not doing this. The fool had borne my head as I do his. What hast thou done? I am perfect, what? Cut off Cloten's head. Son to the queen, after his own report, who called me traitor, mountaineer, and swore with his own single hand he'd take us in, displaced our heads where, thank the gods, they grow, and set them there on Led's town. We are all undone. Why, worthy father? What have we to lose but that he swore to take our lives? The law protects us, not us. Then why should we be tender to let an arrogant piece of flesh thread us? Play judge and execu executioner all himself. For we do fear the law. What company discover you abroad? No single soul. Can we set eye on? But in all safe reason, he must have some attendance. Though his humor was nothing but mutation, I, and that from one bad thing to the worse, not frenzy, not absolute madness, could so far have raved to bring him here alone. Although perhaps it may be heard at court that such as we gave here, hunt here, are outlaws, and in time may make some stronger head. The which he hearing, as it is like him, might break out, and swear he'll fetch us in. Yet tis not probable to come alone. Either he is so undertaking, or they so suffering, then on a good ground we fear. If we do fear, this body hath a tail more perilous than the head. Let ordinance come as the gods forsay it. Howsoe'er my brother hath done well. I had no mind to hunt this day. The boy's fidelis sickness did make my way long forth. With his own sword, which he did wave against my throat, I have ta'en his head from him. I throw it into the creek behind our rock and let it to the sea and tell the fishes he's the queen's son, Cloten. That's all I wreck. I fear it will be revenged. Would Polydote 
hath dost not done it, though valor becomes thee well enough. Would I had done so the vengeance alone pursued me, Polydor. I love thee brotherly, but envy much. Thou hast robbed me of this deed. I would revenge revenges that a possible strength might meet would seek us through and put us to our answer. Well, tis done. We'll hunt no more today, nor seek for danger where there's no profit. I prithee, to our rock, you and Fidele play the cooks. I'll stay till hasty Polydote return and bring him to dinner presently. Poor sick Fidele, I will willingly to him to gain his color. I've let a parish of such Colton's blood and praise myself for charity. Oh, thou goddess, thou divine nature, how thyself thou blazonest in those, these two princely boys. They are as gentle as Zephyrus blowing below the violet, not wagging his sweet head, and yet as rough, their royal blood enchafed as the rudest wind that by the top doth take the mountain pine and make him stop to make him stoop to the veil. Tis wonder that an invisible instinct should frame them to royalty unlearned, honor untaught, civility not seen from other, valor that wildly grows in them, but yields a crop as if it had been sowed. Yet still it's strange what Cloten's being here to us portends, or what his death will bring us. Where is my brother? I have sent Cloten's Claude Paul down the stream in embassy to his mother, his body's hostage for his return. My genius instrument, hark, Polydor, it sounds. But what occasion hath called will now to give it motion? Hark. Is he at home? He went hence even now. What does he mean? Since death of my dearest mother, it did not speak before. All solemn things should answer solemn accidents. The matter, triumphs for nothing, and lamenting toys is jollity for apes, and grief for boys. Is Codwell mad? Look, here he comes and brings the dire occasion in his arms of what we blame him for. The bird is dead that we have made so much on. I had rather have skipped from 16 years of age to 60 to have turned my lapping time into a crutch to then have seen this. Oh, sweetest, fairest Lily, my brother wears thee not the one half so well as when thou grewest thyself. Oh, melancholy, whoever yet could sound thy bottom, find the ooze to show what coast thy sluggish curare might easiest harbor in. Thou blessed thing! Jove knows what man thou mightest have made, but I, thou didest a most rare boy of melancholy. How found you him? Stark as you see, thus smiling as some fly had tickled slumber, not as death's dart being laughed at his right cheek. Responding on a cushion. Where? Oh, fla floor, his arms thus leagued. I thought he slept and put my clotted brogus from off my feet, whose rudeness 
answered my steps too loud. Why, he but sleeps. If he be gone, he'll make his grave a bed. With female fairies will his tomb be haunted, and worms will not come to it. With fairest flowers while a summer lasts, and I live there. Fidelity, I will sweeten thy sad grave. Thou shalt not lack the flower that's like thy face, pale primrose, nor the azurous harebell like thy veins, no, nor the leaf of Eli. Elegantin, uh, whom not to slander, our outsweetened not thy breath, the root dog would with charitable bill, a bill sore shaming, those rich left hairs that let their fathers die. Without a moment, Monument, bring the all this, yea, and furred most beside when the flowers are none to, win to winter ground thy course. Prithee, have done, and do not play in wench like words with that which is no so serious. Let us bury him and not protract with admiration what is now due debt to the grave. Say where shall lay him? By our good Euryphile, our mother. It so. And uh, let us, Polydor, though now our voices have got them manish crack, sing him to the ground as once to our mother. Use like note and words, save that you refill must be fidele. Codwell, I cannot sing. I'll weep and word it with thee, for notes of sorrow out of tune are worse than priests and fanes that lie. We'll speak it then. Great griefs, I see, medicine the less, for Clotin is quite forgot. He was a queen's son, boys, and though he came our enemy, remember he was paid for that. Though mean and mighty, rotting together, have one dust, yet reverence. That angel of the world doth make distinction of place, been high and low. Our foe was princely, and though you took his life as being our foe, yet bury him as a prince. Pray you, fetch him hither. Their sighty's body is as good as Ajax, when neither are alive. If you will go fetch him, we'll say our song the wildest. Brother, begin. Nay, hey, Caldwell, we must lay his head to the east. My father hath a reason for it. Tis true. Come on, then, and remove him. So, begin. Fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hath done. Home art gone, and tain thy wages. Golden lads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers, come to dust. Fear no more the frown of the great, thou art past the tyrant's stroke. Care no more to clothe and eat, to thee the reed is as the oak. The Scepter learnings physic must all follow this and come to dust. Fear no more the lightning flash, nor the dreaded thunderstone. 
Fear not slander, censure rash. Thou hast banished joy and moan. All lovers oh, young, all lovers must, lovers must consign to thee and come to dust. No exercise or harm thee, nor no witchcraft charm thee. Ghosts unlaid forbear thee. Nothing ill come near thee. Why consummation have <laughs> and, and sound be. be thy grave? We have done our obsequies. Come, lay him down. Here's a few flowers, but about midnight more. The herbs that have on them cold dew of the night are strewings fittest for graves. Upon their faces, you were as flowers now withered. Even so, these herblets shall, which were upon you strew, come on away, apart upon our knees. The ground that gave them first has them again. Their pleasures here are past, and so is their pain. Who's <laughs> Imogen? You're on mute. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir, to milk for heaven. Which is the way? I thank you. By John Bosch? Pray. How far thither? At Pitikins. Can it be six miles yet? I have gone all night. Faith, I will lie down and sleep. But soft, no bad fellow. O oh, gods and goddesses. These flowers are like the pleasures of the world. This bloody man, the care on it. I hope I dream, for I saw I was a cave keeper and cooked to honest creatures, but it's not so. Twas but a bolt of nothing, shoot at nothing, which the brain makes of fumes. Our very eyes are sometimes like our judgments, blind, good fate. I tremble stiff with fear, but if there be Yet left in heaven a small a drop of pity, as rent's eye feared, feared gods, a part of it. The dreams here still, even when I wake, it is without me as within me, not imagined, felt. A headless man, the garments of Postumus, I know the shape of legs, this is his hand. His foot mercurial, his martial tie, the bronze of Hercules, but his jovial face murdered in heaven. How? This gone Pistanio, all courses mad at Hecuba, Hecuba gave the Greeks, and mine to boot be darted on thee. Thou conspire with that irregulous devil, Cloton, has here cut off my lord. To write and read be henceforth treacherous, damn it, Pistanio, had with his forget letters, damn it, Pistanio, from his most bravest vessel of the world, struck the main top. O oh, Postumus, alas, where is thy head? Where's that? Ay, me, where is that? Pistanio may have killed thee at the heart and left his head on. How should this be, Pisanio? This he and Cloten, Malice and Luke in them, have laid this woo here. Oh, this pregnant, pregnant, the drug he gave me, which he said was precious and cordial to me, have I not found it? Murderous to the senses? That confirms it, so, confirms it home? This is Pisanio's deed? And Cloten's? Oh. Give color to my pale cheek thy, with thy blood, but that we, the hoary there, may seem to those which chance to find us, O oh, my lord, 
my lord. Top two. You top two. David. <laughs> oh, uh, to them the legions garrisoned in Gallia after your will have crossed the sea, attending you here at Milford Haven with your ships. They are in readiness. But what from Rome? The Senate hath stirred up the confiners and gentlemen of Italy, most willing spirits, that promise noble service, and they come under the conduct of bold Iacomo, Siena's brother. When expect you then? With the next benefit of the wind. This forwardness makes our hopes fair. Command our present numbers. Be mustered. Be mustered. Be mustered. Bid the captains look to it. Now, sir, what have you dreamed of late of this war's purpose? Last night, the very God showed me a vision. I fast and prayed for their intelligence. Thus, I saw Jove's bird, the Roman eagle, winged from the spongy south to this part of the west. There vanished in the sunbeams, which portends, unless my sins abuse my divination, success to the Roman host. Dream often so. And never false. Soft, hope, what trunk is here without its top? The ruin speaks that sometimes it is worthy building. How? A page, or dead, or sleeping on him? But dead, rather, for nature doth a poor to make his bed with the defunct, or sleep upon the dead. Let's see the boy's face. He's alive, my lord. He'll then instruct us of this body. Young one, inform us of thy fortunes, for it seems they crave to be demanded. Who is this that thou makest thy bloody pillow? Or who was he that otherwise than noble nature did hath altered that good picture? What's thy interest in this sad wreck? How came it? Who is it? How, what art, what art thou? I am nothing, or if not, nothing to be wear better. This was my master, a very valiant Briton and a good, that here by mountainers lies slain. Alas, there is no more such masters. I may wander from east to occident, city out of service. Try many, all good, serve truly. Never find such another master. Lack, good youth, thou movest no less with thy complaining than thy master in bleeding. Say his name, good friend. Richard Duchamp. If I do lie and do no harm by it, thought the gods here, I hope they will pardon it. Say you, sir? Thy name? Fidel, sir. Thou dost approve thyself the very same. Thy name well fits thy faith. Thy faith, thy name. Wilt take thy chance with me? I will not stay. Thou shalt be so well mastered. But be sure, no less beloved. The Roman's emperor's, the Roman emperor's letters sent by counsel to me should should not sooner than thine own worth prefer thee. Go with me. I will follow, sir, but first, and please the gods. I, I will hide my master from the flies, and deep as these poor pig-cakes can dig, and when, and when with wild wood leaves and weeds I had strewed his grave, and on it say a century of prayers, such as I can, twice over, I will weep and sigh, and leaving to his service, follow you. So please you entertain me. Aye, good youth, and rather father thee than master thee. 
My friends, the boy hath taught us manly duties. Let us find out the prettiest, daisiest plot we can and make him with our pikes and partisans a grave. Come, arm him. Boy, he is preferred by thee to us, and he shall be interred as soldiers can. Be cheerful, wipe thine eyes. Some falls are meant the happier to arise. Scene three, a room in Cymbeline's palace. Enter Cymbeline, lords, Pisanio, and attendant. Normally, I would skip this to act five. Again, and bring me word how tis with her a fever of the absence of her son. A madness of which her life's in danger. Heavens, oh, how deeply at once do touch me. Imaging and a um, great part of my comfort gone. My queen upon a desperate bed. And in a time when fearful wars Point at me, her son gone, so needful for this present, it strikes me past the hope of comfort. But for thee, fellow, who needs must know, know of her departure, and doth seem so ignorant, uh, we'll enforce it from thee by a sharp torture. Sir, my life is yours. I humbly set it at your will, but for my mistress, I nothing know where she remains. Why gone? Nor when she proposes return. Beseech your highness, hold me loyal servant. Good my liege, the day that she was missing, he was here. I dare be bound he's true and shall perform all parts of his objection loyally. For Cloten, there wants no diligence in seeking him, and will no doubt be found. The time is troublesome. We'll slip you for a season, but our jealousy does not yet a pin. Deep so pin. please, your majesty, the Roman legions from all Gallia drawn are landed on your coast with a supply of Roman gentlemen by the Senate sent. Now for the counsel of my son and queen, I am amazed with matter. Good, my liege. Your preparation can affront no less than what you hear of. Come, more, more, for more you're ready. The want is but to put those powers in motion that long to move. I thank you, and uh, let's withdraw and meet the time as it seeks us. We'll fear not that we from Italy annoy us, but we grieve at chances here. Away! I heard no letter from my master since I wrote him. Imogene was slain. Tis strange, nor heard I from the mistress who did promise to yield me often tidings. Neither know I what is betid to Cloten, but remain perplexed in all. The heavens still must work. Wherein I am false, I am honest, not true, to be true. These present wars shall find I love my country, even to the note of the king, or fall in them. All the other doubts, by time let them be cleared. Fortune begins in some boats that are not steered. Scene four, whale. Before the cave of Balerius, enter Balerius, Guiderius, and Arvaragus. The noise is wrong. Do you want to go back to Guiderius? You want to go back to that one? Um, why don't you keep it going? The noise is round about us. Let us from it. What pleasure, sir, find we in life to lock it from action and adventure? Nay, what hope have we in hiding us? This way the Romans must, or for Britons, slay us, or receive us for barbarous and unnatural revolts during their use, and slay us after. Sons, we'll hire to the mountains. There, secure us. 
to the king's party, there's no going. Newness of Cloten's death will be not known, not mustered among the bands. May drive us to the render, where we will li have lived, and so extort from that which we have done, whose answer would be death, drawn on with torture. This is, sir, a doubt in such a time nothing becoming you nor satisfying us. It is not likely that when they hear the Rome horses nigh, behold their quartered fire, fires have both their eyes and ears so cloyed importantly as now, that they will waste their time upon our note to know from whence we are. Oh, I am known of many in the army, many years. Through Cloten then, but young, you see, not war him from that my remembrance. And besides the king hath not deserved my service, nor your loves who find in my exile the want of breeding. The certainty of this hard life, I hopeless, but have the courtesy of your cradle promised. But to be still hot summer's tamings and shrinking slaves of winter. Then be so. Better to cease to be. Pray, sir, to the army, I and my brother are not known. Yourself, so out of thought, and therefore so o'ergrown, cannot be questioned. By this sun that shines, I will thither. What thing is that I never did see men die, scarce ever looked on blood, but that of coward hares, hot goats, and venison, never best read of horse save one that had a rider like myself, who ne'er wore Rowell, nor iron on his heel, I am ashamed to look upon the Holy Son to have the benefit of his blessed beams remaining so long a poor unknown. By heavens, I'll go. If you will bless me, sir, and give me leave, I'll take the better care. But if you will not, the hazard therefore do fall on me by the hands of Romans. So say, Amen. No reason I, since your lives you set so slight a valuation, should reserve my cracked one to more care. Have with you, boys, if in your country wars you chance to die, that is my bed too, lads, and there I'll lie. Lead, lead. The time seems long, their blood thinks scorn till it fly out and show them princes born. Act five, scene one. <laughs> 